Uh, so, uh, I guess this is just meant to be for people who uh, wanted to get into gaming or you know learning how to make games and uh, thinking about starting their own company and stuff. And as a disclaimer, this is just you know it's not like anyone knows the answer. This is just like food for thought, maybe something that could be considered or you know might be interesting or something. Hopefully. Uh, there are definitely lots of people doing completely approaching it from a, in a totally different way, and they're very successful. So there's absolutely, you know, many different angles. But we're just going to talk about one, which is the rock star, rock band model. Which really, it sounds awesome, but you could also paraphrase it. For, <laughs> it's, it's don't quit your day job, <laughs> or more accurately. Don't necessarily quit your day job, or this is the very verbose version. <laughs> um, so this is that's our talk. All right. So um, when we started <laughs> when we started MetaNet, that really that was sort of our whole plan was uh, don't go bankrupt. That was the business plan. Uh, the serious version is that we felt like as long as we could just keep making our own games for as long as possible, the longer we could keep going, the greater our chances of success. Um, so we reasoned, that the reason we thought that, the reason that was the plan we came up with, was we just figured, you know, the more time we spend making games, the more experience we have, we'll learn more, uh, we'll build momentum, and also since it's like, you know, it's very hit and miss, just the longer you last, sort of the, the greater your chances of, of getting a hit or getting some kind of recognition or something. Because it's very risky. Like to make a game is very risky because you never really know where you're going to get it done. Is it going to turn out well? Uh, right. So the most important thing was don't go bankrupt. And so that leads to some uh, behaviors such as avoid risk. Don't you know, get a huge mortgage and plow it all into your first game because you have no idea whether that, you know, it's just, it's too risky. And also low overhead, just live very cheaply, sort of, uh, you know, just continue living like a student for as long as you can. Um, because again, that's something that will increase the, or decrease the chances of you becoming bankrupt. And uh, also if you're a small team, you can't, making tons of games all the time, so focus on quality instead of quantity is probably good. Um, and also there's like, you know, the little trick way of not going bankrupt, because if you have another job, then you can pour all the money from that job into your business <laughs> to, to sort of indefinitely stay from going bankrupt. So you're probably thinking, okay, <laughs> wow, good, good observations, you know, totally not groundbreaking. Um, since basically students and hobbyists do that, you know, all the time, that's sort of how you do it. You just work in your spare time, evenings, weekends, you do what you can. So, there are plenty of um, examples of great games out there made by tiny teams who've done just that. So, what is the point of talking about this? Okay, well, for one thing, our next game on Pathology isn't done yet, so we couldn't talk about that. <laughs> but also, people... Uh, don't seem to consider sort of making games as a hobbyist might as a valid business plan or model when actually we think that it works out pretty well. Um, we've had day jobs for a very long time into the development of our company and you know we only recently have gone to full time on our own. So uh, our point really is just don't jump off into uh, plan to start a huge company right off the bat. Don't like go for your giant game idea immediately because that might be a little bit outside of your means. Um, so we just basically want to talk about why it's okay to get there slowly to you know work from spare time, part time on your way to full time. All right. So just <laughs> <laughs> Quick refresher <laughs> to make sure we're all on the same page. There, 
or you know, lots of categories of things you might spend time doing, and some things you enjoy, but they might cost you money to do them, and you could call those hobbies, and then things that will earn you money, but you may not like them, which are jobs, and so we theorize that there is some hypothetical ideal middle state where you can you could view it as making your hobby, decreasing the cost of your hobby to the point where it's negative cost and you're making money, or increasing enjoyment of your job to the point where you do it even if no one was paying you. Uh, so very often people start, like, game development for some reason is just really uh, quite frequently approached as sort of a business kind of thing, like a job, like it's, you know, it's training, engineering kind of thing. And it's not really seen as a creative endeavor, um, like playing guitar or, you know, whatever, but there's really no reason for that. It's not fundamentally different than any other sort of thing. So why not think of it like as a hobby, which can, you know, lead towards some kind of income, but it, you don't have to sort of approach it as starting a company necessarily. So, uh, you know, Stain Band starts their career with a hugely expensive, difficult to produce studio album and a world tour immediately. Um, so, it's because it's a band typically isn't seen as a business venture necessarily, but really it's just an enjoyable hobby that can become profitable as you develop skill and you gain fans and popularity and things like that. So, I mean, is that really any different from game development? Why not approach game development in the same way? Um, instead of raising capital to launch your company, it might be a good idea to start growing organically like a band. Um, it's okay if growth is slow and constant and safe rather than risky and fast and sort of all at once because, you know, we've seen tons and tons of studios go under due to too many people um, just being too big, too fast, and you sort of have to have that successful game in order to stay in business. Um, so, yeah, this is sort of an alternate to that model. So, for the, the band approach, we're, we're suggesting that have a bunch of songs written, so songs in terms of game development, things like game ideas or tech or prototypes. And then, once you have enough of them, you can put them all together into an album or a game. So production of your game is really tailored to what you can afford, what you can do at the time. Like, instead of getting a loan and, you know, expanding your business, just make do with what you can, because you can do some pretty amazing things with a tiny budget and a tiny team. Uh, I guess another way of looking at this is using your day job to fund your game development, um, which is much better. Uh, although some sources of external funding are great, generally they lead to a loss of, of control over the project or IP ownership or generally risk, liability, and debt, and things that you kind of maybe don't want. So, um, and actually, a, another good point about that is just that you can't ever assume that your game is going to be successful enough to pay off that loan or, you know, the remortgaging of your house or whatever, because there really isn't a guarantee. And especially since the game industry is getting so saturated and there are so many companies making such amazing games, you kind of can't, you just can't be sure that yours is going to be successful. You can hope and, you know, we help you, but you just never know. So putting everything in one, one game that you need to be successful, for us, hasn't really been a good idea, so this is... And also, if you think about it in the context of a band, no one would go to their bank and be like, give me a mortgage, because I'm going to record this awesome album, and then, you know, <laughs> woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just to try to think about it like that. So to extend the metaphor, um, there's just you know there's a big contrast when you think about approaching it like a just like a, any other creative endeavor. I mean, uh, so for instance, band versus orchestra, right? They both are groups of people that play music, but there are a lot of differences, and you can sort of this is uh, hopefully it gives you an intuitive understanding of sort of the different flavor and sort of what the strengths might be of uh, keeping the team really small, right? You're not gonna be able to do a lot of stuff. Like, orchestras can play a very wide range of music, 
but each individual person is interchangeable and it costs a lot more money to keep an orchestra.